I am shameless by principle in my work. These are the words of my guest for the evening, a composer who compares our creativity to our sexual desires. His perhaps greatest strength is seeing the past neither as something to fear or worship, but as self-evident. Marcus Paus, welcome to the Cave of Apollos. Thank you very much. So, I'm so thrilled to have you here and to have gotten to know you. And an, an important topic for the evening is the literally vital importance of seeing the past, seeing past masters, past knowledge as contemporary. And in connection with that, we'll be dealing with the almost uh, archetypical necessity of resistance and of having a mentor. And we'll talk about your own work and uh, the relation between music and storytelling, but also how your contact with figurative painters like Christopher Rodlin has uh, helped you as a composer. And of course, I would really like to hear your thoughts on the future for tonal music. Now, uh, preparing for this conversation, uh, what you've told me about your edu education, it's like a total remake of the hero's journey. So why don't we just start with that? Tell us about your, your years at uh, high school and having a private teacher. Well, I was very fortunate. I mean, I, I, um, I went to a musical high school before I went to the academy. And um, the teachers at this musical high school were sort of the surplus material of uh, the academy teachers that could not be part of the newly formed Norwegian Academy. So we'd had regional conservatories up until that point. And some really, really fine musicians and teachers went into right. teaching at this musical high school. And I was blessed to meet one of them who became I guess my my initial mentor and my my first comp composition teacher, and um, what was so great about first of all, what was what was so great about this musical high school is that it was kind of a hodgepodge of all kinds of different musicians. Or I mean, musicians is probably overstating it. I mean, we were teen teenagers dabbling in music. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, but what was great was it was there was a sincerity uh, and a dedication to the the actual teaching. And a thoroughness to it that was really quite spectacular. And I, I mean, I didn't know I had no, I had no concept of that at the time. But later on, having studied at, at some other really fine institutions and 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 I dare I say not so fine ones, um, I've I've um, I've really had a chance to appreciate just what how wonderful that was. I mean, we had. Um, kind of an education not only in, in music theory but also in, in art history to some extent and 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 so we learned about understanding music not as a separate domain but as a cultural domain and something that again was um, relevant to all fields and in, 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 of art and, and so, so you basically sort of learned to see music as such just as you know a timeless phenomenon also also yes. when it comes to bordering to other disciplines absolutely it, it, it yeah. was a very sort of um, multidisciplinary um, concept of culture, and I think that was, and, and that's that's something I haven't really seen elsewhere. And I think it, right. it, I don't know why why they had that mind frame, but it was really, it was, I think it was a very um, healthy outlook on what culture is, and and it's it helped me understand my own. Well, later on, at least, it helped me understand my own position within my own field. Right. Okay. Okay. And you, I mean, what specifically did you learn then? Did you then learn composition? How do you? Well, no, no, it wasn't quite that specific. I mean, we would look yeah. at music history, but while we were like, like, you know, so instead of just looking at Bach or Handel or whatever you want to look at, you know, you'd also look at architecture and art and right. look at, you know, what is, the, what is sort of the concept of, of the Baroque, you know, or what is the concept or the, the spirit of Romanticism. So to get so, into the broader culture. Yes, uh, exactly, right. exactly. So, so it, you know, we, we could kind of clean a, 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 I think, a more thorough understanding of, of, of the spirit of, of each age, if you will. Right, right, right. And that was... But, but then, I mean, uh, then a quite decisive point is, <clears throat> The, the understanding of that time, 
because my experience is that you can learn a lot about these different times, but still there's some, some kind of a filter there. This is something else still. You can study it, but it's something else. Was it like sure. that or well, was it just, just natural relation to it? I think what was great was that we were so young. I mean, we, yeah. this was something taught to you know, people in their mid-teens yeah. without any concept of, of history at all. So I, th I think you know, what was great was it was, it, it, it was just kind of a, a, a journey through history. Right. And so, so we, you know, and of course it, it was, it was linear, but it, it really, it really didn't look at any of these art forms or any of these time periods as something shut off. It was all kind of a continuous journey and, and something that it, it was, I think it was all very deeply humanistic in a way. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a very, um, well, I don't want to say um, um, anthroposophical um, idea, but but but, I, but it was akin to that. I think you know yeah. it was it was looking at sort of the the, the, the spirit of an age. In so, a sense. And, and but in in the, in the same time, also almost looking at it from a sort of a historical perspective, or well, it sounds I, a bit I, like I, that. I think I think that sort of just comes with the territory. I mean, we, we, right. you, at, at that age, you don't really have any concept of any of anything. Right. So, okay. so it's, it's, you know, it, 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 it just... So you learned about it in the exactly right age. I think so. Uh, I think right. so. And, 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 and so it was presented at the right time um, and in a very entertaining and um, engaging way. And, right. and so, um, and coming back to your initial question, I mean, I, the, 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 the most important aspect of this for me was that I met my, my first composition teacher who was... Yeah, a, a, tell us about that. Well, his name was Trygve Madsen, um, um, a, a wonderful composer in his own right. Um, and a very, I, I, again, I, I didn't know at the time, but I mean, he was a very, very disciplined craftsman. Um, again, with a very thorough deep understanding of, of technique, um, not in a, only a kind of a historic perspective, but I mean, he was still, is still, uh, I think, one of our finest contrapuntal composers, he, you know, he, and, and um, so he, he kind of realized that I, I had an interest in writing music, and of course I was clueless. I, 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 I knew what kind of music I liked, but I had no idea how to, to go about writing it. Um, and, so how did you go about? Well, I mean, back then, I mean, I think I wrote the way anyone, any any amateur writes. I mean, you have ideas and you sort of try to jot them down yeah. to the best of your abilities. And, you know, and you typically write music, you know, from left to right. I mean, it's, you know, there's, you, you start somewhere and, and, and right. eventually you finish a piece and, and you have no idea about how to structure things. Uh, at least I didn't. Um, but I had ideas. I mean, I, 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 Growing up listening to music and feeling music, uh, so I mean, I, 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 there, there was kind of a, there was an urge to write right. within me, but I, I just didn't know how to tame it or, or, or shape it, um, and so I approached him, and, uh, and he was very generous. I mean, he, he, he um, looked at stuff that I wrote, and, and eventually invited me to his house to, to kind of go over, over things. And what was so great was, he actually put me through a really rigorous training but but i didn't under i didn't realize it was rigorous i mean i i had no i, I you know again i was clueless you had nothing I, I didn't, to compare with it. nothing at all yeah. so you know so so what we did was you know we i mean at that point i i had a pretty good grasp of harmony and and, and essential music theory i mean sort of the basics and a little bit more than that so i, I had kind of a, a jazz theoretical understanding of of, of harmony and, and theory um and um what was wonderful was you know, he taught me first and, and the, sort of the principles of counterpoint uh, from a um, not not just a Renaissance Baroque perspective, but because because what what he didn't do was have me uh, limit myself. I mean, he he had me you know just immediately writing fugues or, or, right. or canons and stuff, and, and 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 he would give me actually very difficult exercises. But I again, I had nothing to compare them to, so I, I didn't know they were difficult, you know. And 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 so we would look at counterpoint, but we would look at at counterpoint, for instance, from the perspective of Bach, or we would look at Shostakovich. Okay. Um, so just short, uh, shortly explain what is counterpoint. Counterpoint is the study of simultaneity in music. So line versus line, if right. you will, right, theme right. versus theme, or theme yeah. versus counter theme. Um, it's the idea of of how to um, 
I mean, you, you can be very general and say it's ha handling different strands of music, different different fields of music, or you can say at that the same it's, time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's okay. it's simultaneity in music. Yeah. Um, it's again, it's also I mean, it's it's also kind of a study of how you layer music. Right. So it's and so it's a, it's a good introduction to basically being able to handle any type of composition in terms of handling all the instruments, handling all. Yeah. It is, it is, right. and and uh, but typically it's taught in in a very sort of stylistically narrow way, and also you know it's taught from the perspective of of um, looking at it as an historical practice and not something that you right. can use. Right, uh, and, and he didn't. He didn't. So 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 you know we would look at Bach, or and then, then the, we'd look at Shostakovich, and he would you know show what you know how Shostakovich built on the past and 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 made it his own and and and. Add, added to that history, added to the sort of the glossary of of, of technique. Right, right. So it was it was you know I I, I got to see and, and you know I, I got to see it as as something that's entirely contemporary. I mean these are just techniques and you can use them to whatever end you you want. And and so what and what was great was you know he he I was I was very young and I I had a lot of energy and and so you know he would say you know for for each lesson I'd bring you know, first just kind of some cannons and, and whatnot, then then fugues and then double fugues and then you know, I'd, you know, he he would sort of drill me. You know, I I did more and more difficult things and I and I, I had no concept of them being difficult. But what was great was you know, we, whenever if we would look at Bach or Shostakovich or whatever we would look at or you know, Shadrin or Schnitzker or whatever, um, it was it was never on a pedestal. Like, it, like it, right. I I I I wasn't taught. To revere or or, or um, worship any of these composers, or it, it, you know, it, it was more like okay, so this is the way Shostakovich did it. Now, now you go do, do the same, or do, you know, write American, write something, and, and you know, of course, it was it was wonderful because I was very competitive, but I was competing not against my peers; I was competing against the greatest masters of, of the craft. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so it, you know, so I and 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 um, it was wonderful, and. Uh, I, I, you know, it's it was it's such a gift because, you know, you, you don't you don't you don't get to fear them. You get to. Right. That, that, I mean, I think that this is such an amazing. Uh, when you told me that during our conversations prior to this, uh, that really stuck in my mind. This this um, the, the fact that you you are not taught to look at it religiously, uh, either through religious hate <laughs> or religious worship. But just as a fact, yes. a, a, you know, this is some uh, some material that you can use. Yeah. These are some principles, and if you know those principles, then you're off to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, 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 exactly. It's yeah. exactly that. It's it's a non-religious take on yeah. a craft. Yeah, and I, I, I think you know, it's kind of sad that you're surprised that it, it's surprised to hear it because it should be so obvious. It is obvious, right? But I mean, okay, so so a really nice simultaneous contrast here is then when you go move on to to the Norwegian Academy of Music. Well, I mean, I I, I was again, I was I was fortunate to, to to be accepted. I was I was very young when I got accepted there. I, I went there sort of straight after the the musical high school thing, and um, I had by then a pretty good idea of the kind of music I wanted to write. Um, and so what I really wanted was a chance to f study, I mean, and, and further sort of discipline myself. And, and, and I, I knew what I, I also knew what kind of music I didn't want to write. Right. Um, and it wasn't out of, um, certainly not out of spite. It was just, you know, I, I, I knew what I loved. I knew what engaged me. Oh. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, I knew my nature as a composer. And little did I know that... Um, well, at the time, at least, that very nature was seen as something important to, to, to fight and combat, and, 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 and well, it was strange because having had kind of a, a craft-oriented approach to my studies, I went from that to this idea that well now you know now you already know the craft you don't have to, to work anymore in that I mean it, it's yeah. it's time to sort of you know broaden your mind and take in your perspectives and I'd listened to all kinds of music I mean I I'd, I'd read not that I really understood them but I at least I'd, I attempted to read uh, Stockhausen's Texas Musique 
when I was in, well, probably around the same age, like 16, 17, 18. Um, and I had a short little time where I was very interested in sort of the complexity of, of, of that type of modernism. But I, 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 it wasn't for me. I mean, it's, it's mm. not the music that I, I, I wanted to write. But how did that... <clears throat> And how does this did this um, resistance or, or well, it become clear when it you when you quite started? Early. I mean, I, uh, well, my 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 initial professor at the academy uh, was a very actually a very good teacher, but but he um, there was another professor um, had a leave of absence while I was when I just when I first got there. Um, but everyone seemed to think that that this professor, the absent professor, was you know that that that. He and I were sort of predestined for, for each other, <laughs> right. um, and 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 so um, I was eventually invited to his house, to his loft. Right. So this was sort and of uh, extra school. Uh, this is kind of extracurricular, yeah. yeah right, right, right. So th but this it, was kind of a a, a um, uh, special thing that they did for you. Yeah, I, I th you know, it, it was it was I think it was an honor. It, it, yes, it was presented as an honor, and it yeah. really was an honor, and I I, I felt very honored. And so I remember my my first evening at that loft, um, you know, and I, I I brought along I think a, a, a short little brass piece I'd written. It was really I mean, I was a child. I mean, I I, I mean I, I I had some ideas of but I knew more about what I wanted to write than than how to write it. You know, so I I still I was still very much a pupil of of of, of that mm. craft, and, and I guess we all are, and, and we always continue to be, but. You know, I, I what I wasn't was a mature composer. You know, <laughs> uh, um, but the, the first thing this professor told me was, "Well, great, now you know your craft. You know, you don't, you can leave that alone from now. Now it's, yeah. it, you know, and I'm, it's, you know, you're in a cage, and I'm, I'm going to break the bars of that cage, and I'm going to, I'm going to set you free." Right. And um, and uh, so his, his attitude was more like. Um, uh, Greenberg within painting then I mean you that we are building on a tradition but the craft of the tradition is no longer necessary exactly exactly right. and, and and so I think you know I, I think he he wanted to save me somehow I mean I you know I, I so I, I was kind of a prodigal student right, right. Um, and I think he took it upon himself to rescue me from right. from my wayward perspectives right, right, right. And uh, so he spent most of our first evening together um, pointing out to me how my my first teacher, I mean, how how flawed the training I'd received up until that point was, and how how dangerous dangerous it is to so approach. So how did he argue that point? Well, like um, I don't think he even bothered to argue it. I think he just sort of presented it as a truth. So you know, I. Yeah. I it was to him, I think, a self-evident matter. I mean, it's right. it's self-evidently wrong. Okay, to... I guess it's what in um, Rand calls the argument from intimidation. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah sure, but I mean, it, it, but it's it's. I mean, intimidation is not always presented that intimidatingly. I mean, usually, it's, I mean, to me, to me at least, the, the 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 main atmosphere of that initial encounter was one of invitation, okay, uh, but okay. also that I was sort of chosen to be set free. <laughs> so there, so there was. I mean, where, where there wasn't religiosity in, in my my training up until that point, there certainly crept in a religious, more sinister aspect. Right, right. Okay, and and but uh, other teachers there then. I mean, was it? Well, I mean, it, 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 there was back then. I mean, there 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 really wasn't much emphasis on technique at all. No. Uh, we had kind of a very cursory um, introduction to. Um, Counterpoint it was it was kind of a beginner's counterpoint the stuff that that you you either knew or you didn't but it, right. it's it wasn't something you could build on um, and it's the same I mean again it was this sort of very it was just a given story yeah and it was it was very sort of um, historically um, I don't want to say historically accurate but it, it was it was historically segregated so we right. would look at polyphony in a 16th century perspective 17th century perspective we would look at maybe Haydn minuets mm -hmm. you know or we'd look at some i don't know maybe maybe we'd look at some schumann songs or some schubert songs or you know for early romantic harmony but it was always as a time period like a time capsule it was like it was it was of course irrelevant because yeah. we don't write that way anymore yeah. you know you can't really build on it yeah. uh, that was kind of that was the idea and um, you told me <clears throat> that one of the other uh, teachers there also, at least in Norway, fairly known name, uh, 
came to you and said that what you do will not work. Yes. And he gave you three alternatives. Yes. What were those? Well, I, um, this again, this was the mid '90s. So the, I think the 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 initial, I mean, the first option was to put everything in quotation marks. So it was, it was sort of the option of irony. Right. So you, okay. you can you can do this, but but you know, make sure that everyone knows that you don't really stand for it. Um, and then, um, of course, another option was you know turn your ship around. You know, it's not too late for you to, to uh, have a change of heart. Maybe, you know, <laughs> so you, you know, choose to, to discipline yourself in a, a different direction. Right. And I think the, the final option was, because I, I, I have always had an interest in, in folk music or, or, or different types of vernacular music and, and, and different types of what was then known as ethnic music. You don't really say that anymore, but that was what, it, what we would call it. So I, I was very interested in, in Indian classical music and uh, Eastern European folk music, and, and 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 he knew about that, and so so the third option was kind of a, a an ethno modernistic approach. So you know you can take not not really this music, but certain elements of it, and focus right. on that, and 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 again, kind of similar to what he, what this particular composer has done in, in his own work. Uh, it, you know, it um, it's quite apparent here. <clears throat> we'll get to that when we're talking about. Um, about uh, your contact with the uh, figurative uh, painters, uh, but it's the same, the same uh, attitude to uh, the discipline in music, how music is taught and how you know, art painting is taught. Yeah, and th that attitude is that you have to uh, not use anything that creates a story, that creates drama in any shape or form. But I mean, okay. So how did you? I mean, did you just compose by yourself? Did you have to take classes, or like no, how I, did you go through those years? <laughs> well, I, 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 did. I mean, I, gosh, I, I, uh, I, I was. I mean, I, I, I did what I had to do. But I, I did. Yeah. A, I, at a certain point, kind of early on, I, I, I did feel very ostracized, and I yeah. was ostracized. I mean, I, um, and I realized that my interests weren't real compatible with anything we were taught. Right. Um, and there was, for instance, I mean, one of the sort of the, the flagship fields of study at the academy back then, at least, was was something called sonology. And sonology, just very quickly, sonology was is, is more of a kind of an analytical tool. It's about instead of analyzing music from a technical perspective, you you analyze it from a um, phenomenological perspective. So you, you know, it, it's about talk. You, you can talk about um, how music is experienced through time in terms of different textures and so on. It's very, very, um, it's more it's, philosophical. It's very generalized. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about the, what I uh, spoke to, to um, uh, Vega Martinson about in the last conversation about the Kantian aesthetical indifference. Is, yeah. is that sort of the point? You, you look at it through, uh, through some kind of, you know, Distancing lens or whatever. Well, I, I I I don't know if that's the point, but it's certainly an effect of it. I mean, it, it's right. it's you know you you you're looking at something, not really describing what made or how you know that what 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 prompted that music to become what it, what it is. Yeah. You know, you're looking at it, you know, in a, in such a generalized but, broad I mean, way that you know it's you can't. Re I mean, it's what what you're saying might be true, but it, it's. Yeah very far removed from how you would go about writing that music. Right, right. So it's it's not a technical tool at all. It's a, it's a it's an a stylistic analytical tool. So it's sort of j pure theory then. Pure theory or right. pure phenomenolo phenomenology, I think. Yeah, right, more. right. So it's it's I mean I'm thinking also about what your colleague Martin Rombard said talked about when it comes to the getting the pure cat. You strip the cap cat of its fur, yeah. and you get the true essence of the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cat's dead, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> no, that's, 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 I think that's a very that's 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 a very fitting image. Right. Um, yeah. No. I, okay. I think, so yeah. you had, you had that, uh, that. That was that was kind of their, their their like I said that's that's their that was their flagship field of study, right. um, and of course there were some orchestration lessons, but they weren't really classes in orchestration. They were classes in. In the history of the orchestra, uh -huh. so again, it's, it's it's this very very. So um, there was no, uh, I mean, in opposition to what uh, your your teacher Trigve yeah. uh, said, th th this is this was not a, s a situation where you would learn to actually make music. No, not not at all, not at all, uh, uh, unless you knew how to do that from before. I mean, of uh, course, you'd have uh, private lessons with your your you know uh, your your assigned professor, uh, and I guess that's where people were 
taught whatever they were taught. Right. But I mean, the actual classes were, um, at least, again, I was very young. I was, I was 18 when I enrolled. So I, I might have, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that part of this is also my, my, um, my rather young feeling of being ostracized. So, you know, I, I, I did, all, I mean, I, I did feel alone. And so subsequently I, I would sort of seek out whoever, I mean, whatever colleagues I could find. And the colleagues right. weren't really other composers, they were musicians. Right. And so I would, you know, I, I'd learn a lot from just sort of walking about the hallways, listening to people practice and writing pieces for whoever I could find, really. So, so that was that was the training that I would that yeah, I would sort of find. Had to there. train yourself in some way. In a sense, yes. Uh, I mean, but but okay. I think that's I mean the the, the most important training anyway is yeah. writing for musicians. That's that's how you learn how to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and thankfully, I mean that that was that was still very much um, something I could do, and 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 I, and I, I something I did do, and I think it's I think it's probably the only reason why I managed to complete my my studies there right and then i mean speaking of that that way of learning it seems like there was quite a bit of more about uh, about that uh when you then moved to new york absolutely and you went to the manhattan school of music absolutely well, so, so how, how's that well i mean i first of all back then i mean some of my favorite composers probably still some of my favorite composers were american composers uh i, I didn't really find anyone in Europe that that seemed to be interested in what I was interested in. Um, I've found some afterwards, but I mean, at the time, my favorite composers were people like John Culliano, Richard Daniel Bohr, Christopher House, John Williams, um, people who were very much, I mean, there's nothing about their music that isn't modern, but it's still, it's still very clearly, clearly of, of the past in the sense that it, it's, it's not a. It's it doesn't exist separate from the past. It, it's mm. it's it's a continuation of, of its history. So there's there's this feeling of um, timelessness in a sense. I mean, at least from, from in terms of craft, it's timeless. And right. I and that's something that I. I mean, I uh, that drew me. I mean, I, the other option would have been to study. I think further east, and that didn't excite me as much as it perhaps should have. Right. So I opted for New York. So and and there you actually learned the craft. Or well, learned... absolutely, it was yeah. it was. But I mean, also by that time, I I you know I I'd written quite a lot of music, and I was I was a better practitioner, uh, even though I was still very young. I mean, I I, I I'd started to work professionally in Norway. I, I'd had my first slew of commissions, and so I mean, I and I I felt. Uh, I don't want to say I felt confident in my work, but I I felt confident about. The path that I'd chosen, right? Thank you. Um, and what was one? I mean, I, I studied with Richard Daniel Poor, uh, who was a, still is a very successful composer, um, and he he'd had kind of a the '90s for him was kind of, was a very triumphant decade in terms of his work. Mm -hmm. So he had lots and lots of very high prestige commissions, and so he was possibly. I don't want to say he was too busy to teach, but he was re he was teaching from the perspective of one who was immersed in his work. So you know he was constantly writing, just churning out music, and these were high profile pieces. And I eventually got to work as his assistant, which was just a gift. I mean, it was it was the greatest right. gift you, you could have been given because. Uh, I mean, know, but that's basically how you should learn because I, then you are in the situation. Exactly. Yeah. And so you know, I, I would, I would be with him at workshops. You know, I I, I was with him while he was working on his opera Margaret Garner, uh, for which Toni Morrison wrote a libretto. So it was it was like it was a, it was a super high profile work, and um, just you know being around that by osmosis, you kind of pick up on so many things. Right. Um, and you know, I specifically remember having been through one of those workshops, and I had an orchestral piece that I I was late. I was I I, I was I was I think. If not, if the deadline wasn't passed, I was, I think, I, I don't know, like a couple of days to write it. But it was, I, I felt so charged writing it because, you know, I'd, I'd been through that whole process of imbibing music at that level of professionalism. Um, and and that's, that was really how he taught. I mean, even, even when I wasn't working as his assistant, I mean, the way he would normally teach was, was you'd bring musicians to his apartment. 
uh, <laughs> and you'd bribe them with wine or whatever you could bribe them with, right. and um, and we would have readings of, of our works at his place. Um, and he would really go about it, not, not so much, you know, teaching you how to write, but really addressing the issues within that work kind of the way a producer would do. So, he, you know, he would look at something, if, if something didn't work, he would point it out and say, well, you know, this doesn't work and try doing this instead, you know, and it, right. would be, it, could, be, it could be technical things or it could be just psychological things, you know, just the way you, um, the way you, you, your score will carry its instructions to musicians. You know, certain things, I mean, if you just phrase it a little bit differently, the musicians will pick up on exactly the color that you're after. Uh -huh. And it was incredible because, you know, he would, he would make our works sound so much better with just, you know, and it kind of just a, sort of waving his wand over it. You know, it was, it was, it was magical and, and it, it was wonderful. And of course, so he, he, he just gave you some uh, feedback on well, this and this, it, like, like the general idea. And so, then, of course, you, you would uh, write that uh, yourself. Well, yeah, exactly. And, and, and sometimes, he, he, you know, he could, it could be like tiny little details, you know, he, yeah. but, he, but those details would be what separated a piece, like it would be what separated a good piece from a mediocre piece or, or, right. or, or a, a good-ish piece. Some, you know, you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you might be on the verge of doing something that would really carry your intentions yeah. um, to their fruition, but, but not quite. And he so, would... Yeah. So, so is, is this where uh, the idea of storytelling comes in? And well... How was his idea? Did he talk about that? At well, all? He, was, he was very adamant about music having to be visceral. I mean, there needed to be a visceral element. There needed to be right. something. There needed to be, I mean, that, that was really, that was the other thing he would do. You know, he, would, if, he would look at whatever you wrote and kind of help you recognize what's, what's, the, what's the urgent, what's the urgency within this piece? What, what, what's, what's really important here? What are you really trying to say? You know, and, 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 and he would help you kind of clear away all the things that weren't necessary um, and help you kind of hone in on exactly what, what made that piece special. Right. Um, now, what was also great, we, we had, of course, I mean, beyond Danny Lepar, we had other teachers and other classes. And we had, uh, for instance, our first year, we, we had an opera class. Um, and uh, it was great because, so the first semester was really uh, kind of opera history and, but, but also, Aristotle and, and the poetics. So we would look at... You would read yes, the poetics and, and... And study opera history. And in so we, light of the poetics? Yes, exactly. That's an amazing thing. It is, it is. And, it, it, you know, and, it, it, and it's really clarifying. I mean, it, it, it really... It's a very lucid approach yeah, yeah. To, to drama. Yeah. You know, and so you'd learn about dramatic form. Yeah. Uh, and, and then for the second semester, uh, which was taught by Daniel Lepore, uh, we, we were going to write an opera scene. Uh, and of course, everything was, I mean, it was always writing for performance. So it, yeah. it wasn't about, it wasn't a theoretical study at all. I mean, of course, we had theory, but I mean, the, the main idea was, you know, your music should be performed. And whatever you do, I mean, it, it's, you don't really know what it is until you hear it in the room right. and, and, and react to it. And you would have to be really careful about how the music builds under the story and how the... But also, well, also the the actual actual um, uh, uh, what the actors say to each other or sing to each other. Uh, absolutely, and I mean, we, it was it was a very it was a very um, dramatically or dramaturgically lucid approach to writing. So we would look at operas from you know, from Monteverdi up until Britain and beyond. You know, and, mm -hmm. and look at what made those operas work, yeah. and also look at what you know certain pieces that don't work. Yeah. You know, and why why do they fail? Yeah. Um, so it's basically the same approach as your first mentor. In a in, in a sense, it completely, is. Completely, it sounds like it's completely a historical uh, perception of the of this uh, discipline. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 just you just look at craft per se. Mm. You know, mm. craft as as is, and it's it's a pragmatic. Um, non-stylistic or non-historically non um, um, segregated approach mm. to, 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 to craft and to how you approach writing. Okay. Um, so how do, how, okay, so with that in mind then, the thing you learned, the things you learned there, yeah. uh, were you then explicitly conscious about uh, music telling a story? Or like, like how would you phrase it, uh, if you should phrase it with your own words? Well, uh, uh, like, like in your music, in my, if, you, if you talk about your music, what do you think about when you are writing some some piece? 
Well, I, I can... Let me, let me put it this way. What, what's different in how I approach writing music now versus when I first started writing music is a consciousness of, of form, of how you kind of um, decide what the piece is about. I mean, so, so, you, so there's a framework. You, you understand, I mean, it's, it's being conscious about what to include and what not to include. And, 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 right. and, and, and of course being... I think when it comes to narrative and 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 draw and and drama and, and and sort of dramatic form and so on, that's something that I think is another aspect of, of Aristotle and the Poetics, for instance, is that you know it's a study of something I think is kind of innate. It's something that comes from a very natural approach to. I mean, it it, it yeah, life it, looks like that. In yeah, sense. and you just have to find out what leads you to that result. Exactly, if, as a composer. Ex exactly. I mean, and 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 with it, with, within any dramatic arc. Yeah. You know, they're always sort of nested dramatic forms. So, yeah. so you can you can take any any moment in time. You can yeah. kind of find that drama. Any at least any interesting moment in yeah. time will have that drama. And I, I, you know, that's one of the thing that's, things that really struck me reading the, the poetics. That his, he talks about, uh, of course, tragedy proper uh, plays, uh, and how they develop and sort of unfold like some plant. To yes. its natural state. Exactly. It's and and that state, there there's no development. It's just a matter of well, you can you when you write music, you have some a slightly different angle. That's your sort of personality. There's no question of originality, but some some personality we have to tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the the point is to get the essence of human existence, basically. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't change. No, exactly. It's exactly that. It's it's about really letting or looking at what an organic state is or what, what an organic development does and is. I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't, you can really do whatever you want. It's not about uh, um, kind of a straitjacket. It's not, it's not something that um, prevents you or precludes you from being adventurous. It, 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 but it's about understanding how drama works and what yeah. makes it tick. Um, it's the same, I mean, of course, music as a field generally, I mean, at least if, if you're writing abstract music, like a sonata or whatever, a symphony, um, you, you know, you're, it's, a, it's an, in a sense a non-semantic language. I mean, it's, 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 although I wouldn't really agree that music is meaningless, but it's, it's, but it, it, but it's, it, what it, it's, it's non-specific in a sense, it's emotional. It's not visual, cl visually clear what it's about. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, but, but, but still, I mean, there's, uh, that's something that I find, um, Probably the one thing that bores me the most about most concerts I go to of, of purely contemporary music, I mean, by contemporary music, I, I guess I mean music of a more of a, kind of an avant-garde idiom or, or yeah, a modernist sort of idiom, modernist whatever, yeah. Uh, and I mean, I, 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 I'm not, I, you know, I can enjoy that for what it is. But the one thing I typically find the most... Um, well, the least stimulating aspect of it is that it's like you, you walk into a room and, you know, you can see the furniture, but there's no one there. I mean, there, there's, you know, there, it's, it's sort of a, a faceless right. art form. Right. Uh, and I, th I think that's kind of I mean, going into the dramatics and going to, to um, if you want to talk about uh, the poetics and in, in, in terms of writing instrumental music, for instance. I think what we, you know, what we, what separates a romantic tradition from, from a modernist tradition is really the, you're looking at, I mean, one has music as subject, whereas the other has um, music as an object. So it's, right. it's, it's, it. Okay, so, so, okay, here's just one, um, one memory. I remember discussing with a uh, modernist composer, and he described music as the relation between tones in space. Is this the object? That's a very yes. I, I yeah. you know, I, I, I think yeah. that sounds quite objective. So I mean, I mean, you, you're sort of putting on these white gloves, and you you have these uh, instruments to touch the music. You you're not hands on. Well, it's a different way of being uh, hands on. I mean, I mean, I, I, you know, there is this this idea that that being playful with your material is is really about looking at material in a very objective way so it's it, you know it's it's not about i mean there's this the, the old adage that 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 um it's not it's not the themes it's what you do with them oh. and i think as an adage that's that's that can be true but i mean if you 
if you were to ask Mozart, you know, if, if, if say that you know your melodies aren't important, it's what you do with them. I don't think he'd agree. I mean, it's it's also about the melodics. It's also about the material per se, and what what, and that has because that underlines the whole story. If there's a story there, well, that's yeah. that's that's the entire that's the essence. That's mm. the entire essence. Mm. And and of course you can, I mean, you, we were discussing a, 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 another. Chromatic violin concerto earlier on, and and you were describing how yes, the, unsatisfactory that experience was. Yeah, yeah, and well, it's, yeah. And it's it's the same thing. I mean, you know, if and you can have you can have pieces that are virtuosic, you know, by virtue of of, of their technical skill or how how skillfully they're they're written, but there's still another aspect to music. I mean, and that's I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. No, please. That's uh, I <clears throat> really I think that annoys me with because I'm, I'm of course I'm always trying to think as a painter uh, and we'll talk about the, the the similarities or potential differences between music and figurative painting uh, but but you know uh, there's a lot of uh, figurative painting when they're trying to tell a story then they're trying to be sentimental or dramatic in some form and it's all figures like this. Yeah. Ah, uh, with yeah. for shortenings and yeah. everything sort yeah. of sort of you know you know uh, baroque is just dull in comparison because there's so much good things going on yeah. and and so that's one thing that that you know trying to to tell something can lead to the other thing is is that that I th and I think that there's a there's a, a corollary of that in music where uh everything is depicted with the utmost detail yeah. so you lose the direction of it well if, if all you have are details you don't really yeah. have much at all i mean it's and it's, it's, it's very hard to care about details yeah, I mean, if, if, if they're not detailed within a framework of something else right i mean it's like i, I think that what we're talking about here is, is the same thing as if an author should use all his training learning to to make grammatically perfect sentences yeah yeah but but you with the story? arbitrary words because the words yeah. don't really matter. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Because, yeah. And that uh, is that the sort of the sonological <laughs> well, approach. Not, uh, uh, perhaps not the oh. sonological approach, but it's it's certainly an approach of it's it's this it's it's a very it's a, I think it at least brings to mind an academic approach uh, oh. or an 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 approach that you would find in, in I guess what I would call. Academic modernism, which oh, is kind yeah. of the, this, which is pure technique somehow. Pure technique in, in, in a very, in a, in a, I guess in a, or through the prism of, of, of pure intellect. So yeah. it's it's a, it's a non-sentimental approach. And that's a strange thing. I mean, you can have, I guess, tonal composers, or you can have classical figurative painters who still are sort of modernists. Oh, well, absolutely. Because they think like that. That there's no story. I mean, is that the bottom bottom line? When there's no story, there's no sincerity or drama there. That's where you become sort of modernist in, or, or well, I, so called I, contemporary. I, 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 to me, I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I'm. I consider myself a very. I, I'm. I'm not an ideological composer at all. Uh, so I mean, f but to me, the shortcomings of of a lot of modernism is it's lack of inherent memory mm -hmm. so there the, you, you know there's this, this there's a sense that a piece doesn't really recognize where it comes from so you can sort of you could you could put yourself in the middle of a piece and have no and it, it, it's and it's no different from being at the start or at the end of it it's it's uh -huh. all just kind of a, a i don't want to say atmosphere because it's it's not always all that atmospheric <laughs> either but it's 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 this idea of of, of the non-dramatic yeah. Or if it's, or or you might have gestures that 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 try to resemble drama, but mm. there, but you know, but if there's nothing to care about, there's no drama, mm. and I I, mm. I I think that's, and I mean, I, I not to say I don't enjoy, I mean, I, I can enjoy music written in any idiom. I think if it's if it's written well within, well with, within its own parameters. I mean, if it, mm. you, you you can recognize a good piece regardless of of what kind of artist wrote it i think but it's but i but, but I, I i do think that for instance i mean there is a re there is probably I, at least a reason why we don't have many successful modernist operas mm -hmm. or you know or at least why they're not staged very often yeah. um i mean schoenberg tried to write a, a love story uh in a 
darkophonic or 12-tone style or language uh, from Heute auf Morgen, which, because he, 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 I don't think many people would believe that now, but I mean, once upon a time, you could, as a composer, truly believe that it was arbitrary. I mean, it does, it does, it's not a matter of what notes you use. Any note can mean anything. Right. And it doesn't really work that way. I mean, again, going back to the idea of the organic, I mean, there is there is a natural reasoning behind tonality, for instance. Right. Uh, so, it, so it, it's, it stems from nature. I mean, it's, 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 it's cultured, I mean, because it's, it's, not, it's not, not entirely overtonal, but it, it comes from nature. Right, right. Like, as I would say, does dramatic form. Yeah, I'm thinking about how, about how <clears throat> the whole idea of modernism is somehow based on a liberation from the human baseline. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I, I can I can see, and that's it's kind of the, the the whole Adorno uh, idea, and I can I can see why that why that was a, a, a mindset once upon a time. I mean, at least right after the, the Second World War, I can I can I can see why you'd sort of rebel against but against history thinking that it was corrupted but i think that's a very naive approach right because i i i'm thinking about <clears throat> you know listening to your music and i guess it's um it, that's on odes and elegies there i think in the middle here um uh, the piece which is called uh, love's last rites yeah and i think what you did so wonderfully well there the, is the complete lack of irony you know uh, it's putting it negatively but I, I should say it positively there's so such great yearning in the music and really i mean great drama in it and how how did you then how do you think when you when you um, uh, create a mu piece like that well I, I think now when i write music um i mean i uh, it's there there are different aspects too. I mean, depend, depending on where I start a piece, but usually, I mean, I, I'm still one of those. I mean, I'm still the kind of composer that I mean, I, I jot down ideas. So ideas will come to me, and I try to to keep track of them. Uh, but once I have those ideas, and if I know that I'm writing a piece, I mean, this, this is a commission for Henning Kiragiro, a wonderful Norwegian violinist, um, and I, of course, I I knew I I knew I, was, I knew I was writing for him, so right. I, I I I knew about his qualities as a player and one of I mean he can play anything but I, I've, I've written other pieces for him before that that are more sort of virtuosic and I but I think one of his greatest strengths is his ability to sing and I wrote that piece I was I was kind of in a, a moment of or I was in a transitional phase in my own life and you know so that my own life was full of contrasts and 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 full of there was a lot of pain, but also a lot of yearning. I, I, I knew where I was, where I knew where I wanted to go, but I, I, I couldn't quite free myself from where I was. Right. Um, and I think that's something that probably translated into that that piece in, in, in some sense. It's a, it's a, it's a, at least to me, it's a very dark piece. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, but one, but I, I, I knew once I had the theme, um, and I knew that I was writing it for Henning. Um, you know, it's it's really about sort of casting that theme as a protagonist in, in a musical drama. So, I, 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 so it was about tracing the journey of that theme and, and, and there were other motivics yeah. that, that accompany I mean, it. And do you envision some kind of uh, something visual? When sometimes you I do, sometimes. But, I mean, I, especially when I, I, mean, I, I write a lot of music inspired by, for instance, paintings or, or, yeah. or, or other art forms. And, and, and those times I, I typically, if I don't envision the actual painting, I will, you know, it, it's about what, it's about, I can, I mean, I can sometimes actually look at it from a purely uh, compositional point of view, and I'll, I'll try to sort of do some of the same things, or at least the way I, th or what I th perceive to be similar things. Um, mostly it's about just kind of an atmosphere and, and about something that, it, if something speaks to you, you want to respond. Right. Uh, so it's about responding to that, but I mean, in this particular instance, I. I think what I was responding to was was the musician I was writing for, first of all, and then it happened to coincide with a specific moment in my own life where that was the music that seemed, in a sense, cathartic for me to write. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can understand that when, when you were saying it. I mean, when we're talking about <clears throat> tonal music or classical figuration, 
you shouldn't have to know the story. But when you tell this, tell a story, I understand what you what you're talking about. Yeah. Because there's a passage there around, I think it's something somewhere around two minutes, and this violin violins are lying there's quite low, it's just sort of almost not making any sound at all. Yeah. And then this violin is just shooting over all of that. Yeah. And that span is just, uh, I'll never forget that. That was really an amazing experience. Well, I'm, I'm very glad you liked it. But, but okay, so, so uh, but it, from what I've heard of your work, it seems like you have a fair span of, of uh, types of compositions you do. I mean, in the same, I can really recommend this. You find it on, on I've been listening to it on Spotify. And I guess you're on YouTube too. I so, uh, but I guess the first is the first three. It's one piece, but it's in three parts. The portrait yeah. of Sue. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Just for a flute. Yeah. And I, I at first, I, I couldn't uh, understand what was going on here yeah. because it was so different than what I expected to hear. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to uh, well, say a little that, bit. Well, that 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 piece in particular was that was actually it, it's it's. Um, that, that was a, a commission. I was I, I wrote a piece for um, a Norwegian dance company called Frikar, um, and and they had a, a performance they were going to do uh, at the uh, Bergen International. Uh, it's called Bergen International Festival. I mean, it used to be the the the, the Festspiel or the the yeah. So, oh, okay, okay. So 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 essentially, it was it was it was a dance performance of four Norwegian folk dancers and four Kung Fu monks. And the youngest of those, of the four monks was a, a boy named Zhou Wenbing. And he was, I think, about 10 years old. And, and just an incredible artist. And, and he had this magnetic presence. And, you know, of course, these, all these dancers, um, you know, there's this sort of gravity-defying grace to everything that they do. I mean, and, and, but, but most of the most of the performers were in their late teens or twenties, and I think maybe one of the Norwegian dancers was in his thirties. Um, but there was something about just this, the, the serenity of this young boy, and his story was really incredible. He'd um, he'd had a dream or, or a vision uh, when he was about four years old, uh, where, where, and he and so he went to his parents. Uh, somewhere in China, and said, "Well, mom and dad, I want to be a kung fu master. Now, I, you know, and I, and I want to instruct and teach others the the art of kung fu." And you know, this being China, uh, they said, "Well, you know, if that's what you feel, and then 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 if that's how you feel about it. Well, you know, certainly." So so you know, off to the temple he went, uh, and 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 so there's you know, talk about a hero's journey. Um, so and, and and so so that was that. So he, he that's a decision he made, and and you know, and and now he was ten and. Already, you know, a, a master at least to 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 my untrained eyes. But he, you know, it's incredible what they can do. And and you know, he became sort of the mascot of the show. And so the the actual show uh, was written for chamber group, and then NRK wanted uh, to do an orchestral uh, version of it. You know, like a this TV is, ballet. This is Norwegian uh, state uh, yeah, television. Or, yes. Or, yeah. And so um, and and. I knew they had a wonderful flutist that I, I wanted to write for, and and so I, I wrote I, I took some themes from the, the chamber score, the the the, the actual sort of the, the score proper, and and arranged that. So I, I you know making it into kind of a, a miniature hero's journey for flute and orchestra, and that's and and so but it, I mean it has certainly. Um, I guess what you'd now call moments of cultural appropriation. Uh, <laughs> but uh, okay, yeah. uh, uh, next topic. Uh, but, uh, okay, so 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 there, there's there's but, but what was wonderful? I mean, this predates the era of cultural appropriation uh, by, by by a couple of years. So I, I you know I, I I was still okay. Um, it just I, makes I, it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, so, oh so, so, so that was. So, you know. But I enjoy doing that. I mean, I, yeah. I, I enjoy, tr you know, trying to sort of write my way into the drama of the occasion, or write my way into the right. occasion. I mean, again, now that I know the the story, I, uh, I, understand why when I was listening to it, I was just thinking about air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it, it but it, but it has that. I mean, the, the, mm. you know, the, the, just the way they move. It's mm. such a graceful. Mm. Sort of levitational. Okay, but so <clears throat> let's get to another part of your production, film music. Yes. How I mean, you're now uh, relevant, as they say. 
uh, with the film music for a new movie com- coming out, Mortal, yes. by Andre Overdal, who's yes. made Troll Hunter, he's made Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, the Autopsy of Jane Doe, and I think oh, other oh, things. A wonderful director, yes. Could you, before we get into to, um, sort of the general criticism of a tonal composer today, because I think that's an interesting point, uh, say a little bit about composing for film. Well, um, th- I think the first thing I should say is that you know, some of the first music that I fell, or at least some of the first orchestral music I fell in love with, and some of the music that, that's probably shaped me the most as a composer, um, has been film music. And I mean, in, you know, in many ways, Hollywood became an exile for the Romantic tradition. I mean, some of the greatest European composers fled and, 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 and pretty much, I mean, what we know as the Hollywood style is, is a conglomerate of... I mean, the classical tradi- tradition would have been dead without America and, and a- Absolutely, Hollywood. absolutely. And, and, and to me what's interesting is, you know, not only did, did it survive there, but it also evolved. And I think, you know, it, to me, if you look at the way, you know, someone like John Williams underscores, the way he underscores drama, I mean, it's, it builds on yeah. the romantic operatic tradition yeah. of, of the 19th century. So but it's, again, you're, you're, you're talking about a, a discipline where you think storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. Absolutely. And where you build, you know, you build on what came before. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, you see music as an evolving language and not as a series of separate languages. Yeah. And I think what's interesting to me now is film music. I mean, there used to be... Um, disdain from the classical world towards film music, but I think that's evaporated. I think at this point, if you look at orchestras now, they, they pretty much survive, you know, by, by doing film music concerts. That's, yeah. that's, that's, their, that's, that's their main gig almost. Right, right, right. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and some of that music is, or happens to be some of the best orchestral music you know, written in these past 50 years or so. Um, and, you know, certainly some of the music that inspired me, I mean, my, I, I grew up in the 1980s, so, you know, I, I, I as did you. So we were blessed, you know, listening to scores, you know, to Star Wars or E.T. or, you know, it, just yeah. wonderful, wonderful romantic music um, and modern romantic music, too. I mean, it's, it's you know, what's, so, what's to me so interesting about that music is the way it integrates exactly what it needs to from what came after. Right. So, you know, you'll, you'll find techniques that perhaps belong to a, a modernist tradition, but, but it's used dramatically to enhance and, and, and embody so something it's, deeply it's com- human. It's completely eclectic. It's completely what eclectic. What you need to underline the story is what you use. Exactly. Okay, so, so, okay, so if we stick to one specific um, uh, case study, and, and I know Everdahl's movie isn't out yet, it, it's, it's mortal, so, so uh, uh, p- people want to hear your music, see it. Um, how specifically do you work Making with, film music. Well, uh, it's interesting. Um, what's it's very different in in many ways. What's what's the only thing that's similar is that it, it comes from me. I mean, so it's it's still my language. But I. I but if it's where where, where go? I mean, it, what's what, what, what what I do is I mean I, I write very specifically to the scene. So I will sit there, you know, with, you know, I'll watch the film, and I'll sit there and write, and I'll you know I'll I know that. You know, today I, I'll, I'm going to have to write from from here to there. Mm. Um, so that might be, you know, that can be a minute, or it could be two minutes or three minutes. It can be, you know, any kind of texture, rhythm. Sometimes it's a little, it's dense and, and lots of ink, and other times not so much. Um, but what I do is I, I empathize. I mean, that's, that's the main technique is you have to watch this and you have to sort of imagine yourself as a member of the audience. You know, and you have to react and think, well, where does this scene take me? And where, where does it need to take me? And, and, and so, so there's, there's an element of, you're, you're, you know, you have to be specific to the moment. But knowing, I mean, my privilege is I, I know the entire arc of the film. So I also need to think, well, okay, so there's something dramatic happening here, but I know there's something even more dramatic happening there. Right, you know, right. you know, and I, and I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to blow that moment. So I'm, you know, so I, you know, I'm, I better keep it a little bit more subtle here. And then, you know, and, and I mean, I, that particular score is, a, it's a very light motivic score. There, there, it's, it's, um, 
and I, you know, I've, I had, I've had the, the good fortune of, 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 of having had lots of time to write it. Um, it's, it's, it's been a film, for me, it's been, at this point, a year and a half, almost two years in the making. So, you know, I've, I've had the, the privilege of, of really thinking symphonically. Uh, by that, I mean, I've, I've had the privilege of not only knowing the entire scope of the film, but I've been able to kind of plot the, the greater narrative in a symphonic way. So, so you know, to me, the, the first act of the film is like a fr first movement of a, of a large symphony. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a it's a fairly long film, and I've written a lot of music for it. And um, I've been with it through uh, several um, incarnations of the film, so to speak. I mean, they, they, you know, they, they keep editing it, so, yeah. and they've changed the tone a little bit. So every time there's been a tonal change, I've had to go back and redo some things. And, uh, but, but still, what's been great is I've been able to really plan ahead. So I, you know, I knew where I was heading. I, 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 I can't really be specific about the plot, yeah. but I can say that it, it is kind of a hero's journey. Um, and it's very much about self-discovery. It's a film about, about identity. Um, and so I've tried to, to plan it that way and structure it that way. So, yeah. so you know, we, where we end up is, is a very different place from where we begin. Uh, but still, I want to make sure that I've traced that journey in a way so that when we finally get to that moment, the big reveal, you know, it, it's, it's going to feel revelatory, but also somehow vaguely familiar. I mean, we've been familiarized with, you know, subtle motivics that, you know, finally get their denouement, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and, and well, at least that's, that's, that's what I hope. Right, right, right. Uh, so would you say <clears throat> working with film music uh, uh, helps you as a composer, sharpens you? I, I hope so. I think so. I mean, I, I think any, you know, I've, I've, this is only my, I think, 10th or 11th film score, but I've, but I've written quite a bit of opera. And I, I, to me, there, I mean, the only, well, there, there are differences, obviously. I mean, the structure in many things, but, and certainly there are, you know, you don't, you don't have singing protagonists. Um, but I think just the, the way, the way I respond to drama, I think is similar. And I think I've, I've, and I wish more composers writing opera would learn from film. Uh, but I think, I think opera as an art form is or has become a bit stagnant. Right. Uh, and I think that sometimes we, we might not be as subtle as we could be in, in, in opera. And I think, I think there are ways of, for instance, thinking underscore, underscoring drama that opera hasn't a recent opera hasn't done very effectively, and I, I think there there's a lot to to learn. And maybe there are things. I mean, I the other way going you know, what what film could learn from I don't want to say opera, but but from art music is certainly there should be more art music composers writing for a film. Mm -hmm. That we you know you should you have recommend more. that. I also yeah absolutely composers. absolutely. Well, I, I would recommend composers to seek it out, but most importantly, and that's kind of the, that's that's the main issue. I would I really wish more directors and producers would trust better trained composers right. to score their films because mm -hmm. I think film would benefit tremendously from it. And I think there, there has been a tendency in, in recent years to have a very different type of composer score films. And, mm -hmm. and that's great too. I mean, that's, that's given us wonderful music and, or at least wonderful film music or effective film music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be without it, but I think, or at least I, I would wish to have um, really intelligently trained composers who felt deeply for film mm. and who really who loved the art form contribute more i think i think there i think wonderful audio visual art could be made that way and the the amazing thing is i've heard uh, critics when they talk about sort of serious tonal music, when it comes in within the field of serious art, mm. then they are really quite aggressive. But when it's film music, it's like they can, because it's a different field. They forget all the art prejudices 
and they are free to, to just relish and love the drama and the intensity of it. So, I, I, I mean, as, uh, as a sort of transition into to the criticism that you've experienced, I mean, I, I presume your film music hasn't been criticized the way your, your other work ha has been. Well, let's been. wait and see. Okay. <laughs> Shall okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> you can come back if that happens. So, um, I think the uh, case study here is your concerto for timpani and orchestra. So, play it again, Sam. What's the story? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, was uh, I was asked to uh, write a timpani concerto for the Bergen Philharmonic's 250th season. Can you imagine? Uh, or at least their anniversary. Uh, and and um, you'd, I mean, you'd think a timpani concerto would be a kind of an inconspicuous little item on, on, <laughs> on a long roster of, of, of new commissions. And, you know, it, it's, I thought of, of the piece as, you know, I, I wanted to write, well, there aren't that many things you can do for, for a solo timpanist. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's not... I have to, having said that, we, you know, I, we had a phenomenal timpanist who really yeah. transcends the instrument in a, in a sense. Or, and that or, recording is on YouTube too, so people can hear it. Yeah. But um, so, so I, I, I wrote a piece for him, and I, you know, it, it's it's a it's it's a celebratory piece. It's a very virtuosic piece, and it's it's a piece that that celebrates him as a performer, and it was meant to celebrate the orchestra. And you know, what's not timpani is you know is a piece that still kind of exposes the different sections of the orchestra in a way that, I, that I, I'd hope would be, be fun for them to do. And, and, mm. and, and, you know, and, and the orchestra enjoyed that very much. And, and it, was a very, um, it was a very successful premiere. And, um, and, uh, <laughs> and then a, 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 I think a week goes by and I, I, I get an email from a former professor of mine uh, and he, you know, just sort of notifying me that he's about to, to uh, publicize uh, uh, not, not, not really a critique as much as an assault on... Uh, he says that. Uh, well, he says, uh, he, 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 well, he, he wrote was, I, I've, I've written something about your timpani concerto. It provoked me tremendously, and I think you should know that. Uh, you ought to know that. And, and, and that, was, that was the end of it. Um, now... Uh, this professor, I mean, we, this is the same, this is the, the professor, I mean, who, who was sort of chosen for me or I was chosen for him. I mean, we, we've, right. we, were, we were sort of, uh, <laughs> we were meant for each other and not. Um, and, and, and so, but I, I hadn't heard from him uh, for several years. And the last I'd heard was I'd, I'd received a letter upon my uh when I when I become part of the Norwegian Memor uh, Society of Composers, oh, yeah. when I was uh, when I was, uh, you have to recount it. I mean, yeah, to get the context, that you have to well, recount the content of that well, letter. So so I was I was accepted as a member of the Norwegian Society of Composers. I think in two thousand five or six, and as a new member, you're supposed to give a presentation of your work at this, this sort of annual Christmas dinner, and so I didn't. It was it was really it was. It was just that I, I I brought along a cellist friend of mine who played a solo cello piece, and I think I played a movement from my symphony, and just talked a little bit about about um, well my my experiences in New York, my my approach to writing music, and it really it was as far removed from any sort of polemic you could you could possibly. Want I mean it really so it you was, were just it, sort of neutrally describing was, what what you were working with. It was entirely neutral. And you know, and what was interesting was, I mean, I, it, it 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 felt like you know, it 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 felt like a very welcoming moment, and 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 people were friendly, and and mm. my colleagues seemed to, I mean, people were interested, and I I was interested in what they were doing, and you know, the Norwegian Society of Composers is really it, it's it's a very all-encompassing place. I mean, it, 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 at least it's, it's become that now. It, mm -hmm. it you know, might not have been once upon a time, but I, but I think now at least it's, there are so many different members and people write all kinds of different music, um, more and more so. But anyway, so uh, having done that, I, I, I think another, I think about, you know, again, about a week uh, went by and, and I, I received a package in the mail, um, a letter and a bunch of CDs 
from the same professor. Yes, and and so uh, and the letter um, uh, essentially, uh, well, I think I, I I might still I might I I used to have it memorized, but it it, it was it was it was essentially uh, it was essentially a, 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 a it was a very dismissive letter. I mean, it it. it mm. It said that I, um, the what I what I presented was offensive, um, and it uh, proved that I had no concept of what it means to be a creative artist. Um, and uh, furthermore, um, that well, he, he it, it actually um, made reference to uh, its writer, um, its author, having been part of a committee uh mm. evaluating some work or other and it, it it wasn't specifically about me but it said that it, it might as well have been and um what it what it stated was that this the composer in question um the, the one that the committee in question had had um evaluated yeah uh what what he had done was uh write music uh, Kind of it mimicking mimicking a tradition, but you know, but but not adding to it. So it wasn't really it wasn't really a matter of of being a creative composer at all. But it, right, it was right. but it was it was it was about you know copying or yeah, being yeah. unoriginal, Imita imitating a tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so and and um, and then the the letter closed with um, what was the final passage? Something about uh, he didn't really want to have any further verbal contact with me. But he hoped that I wouldn't spend my life um, causing disruption within the membership of of of, of the Norwegian Society of Composers, um, and and that was that was the end of it. And I didn't really do anything. I, I thought about replying, but I didn't. But he said he wanted no verbal contact whatsoever. So I thought, well, I'm going to respect that, and I didn't do anything about it until I think five years later, uh, where I. Decided finally that well fuck it I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna set this to music, and 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 and, and so I, I set that letter to music and and the letter was signed the teacher who was not to be. Yeah, yeah because he was quite insulted that you hadn't yes, wanted he, to learn his he, way. That's he he started the letter saying um well, gosh I, I I wish I could I'm gonna try to paraphrase it well um well he said that uh, um the fact that I absolutely refused to let myself be taught by him was for him a, 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 a personal defeat yeah and uh it went on to say that we're not that different as composers you and i but the fact that you haven't even bothered to uh check out my work and 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 and, and acquaint yourself with what i wrote and and, and that's that's hence the 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 the, the packet of cds it was right. a stack of cds i think five or six of them um was um well, I, I, I guess he just he felt that there was something more than more than a defeat. I think I think he felt that that was defiant and in, 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 in a kind of a, an insolent way. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 so, uh, but I said okay, so, that yeah. yes, you first. So so uh, the same teacher then reviews or whatever the Timpani Concerto. The Timpani Concerto. Yeah. Yes, and um, that actually launched probably the biggest. Public debate of about art music in Norway since I'm guessing the, the 70s or something. It, it was it was wow, it was a, it was a it was a big deal. It's a big deal. And yeah. and um, his assault on the timpani concerto um, contended that this music was essentially a fabrication. It was a lie. Writing this music is a lie. It's it's trying to trick the audience into thinking that this is contemporary music, right. whereas it, of course it's not. Yeah. Um, is this where he accuses you of of uh, of uh, gluttony in long since burnt out cliches? Yes, I think yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, uh, and and. Um, Oh gosh, I, I, I've, I've, I've forgotten about most of the, the, the invectives he used, but, but some were, were curious. I mean, one of the things that I, I remember him trying to, um, trying to insist on was that this piece is also um, a matter of neglecting the um, development of the art form, and yeah. also in terms of writing for timpani. Now, it, it happens to be a very modern timpani piece. I mean, in terms of what it, the demands it asks, but what it. What it doesn't do is ask the timpani to do a lot of things that that's not that well that that 
doesn't really pertain to timpani. I mean, it's not about right. making other sounds from the timpani, but it's but it's a very it's a piece that could not have been written even I think four years ago because it, it's it's a very it it demands state of the art timpani and it demands state of the art timpanist. Mm. Um, and so it's 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 actually a very um, it's a very modern piece, but it's but what it does is, I mean, it it, it presents modern techniques in a way that that's meant to feel um, joyful and and fun and and festive. Mm. At the time, I mean, although there were, were a couple of colleagues of, of ours that 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 sort of took his side. I think mostly they didn't, and and you know, and that's and, and, interesting. And I think what what I think really what what happened was, I mean, for anyone to launch that kind of attack, and it, it was a very ad, ad hominem attack. I mean, it was it, it, it was it was not attacking the timpani concerto as much as attacking, and not even me as an artist, but me as a person, and and the concept of writing that music. Yeah, well, as, I mean, as, it was a, sort of a classic example of. Of uh, of uh, conflating aesthetics and ethics. Absolutely, and and but but you don't you don't launch an attack like that without somehow feeling entitled to it, you know. And I, th right. I th and I think he he, he must have. Yeah. I mean, he he must have felt so certain that, you know, that that whatever whatever he felt was consensus. Yeah. Um. I mean, he the the original mail that I got, you know, the copy of of of, of the article, um, ended with um. An appeal for me to withdraw from the Norwegian Society of Composers and 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 rather join a, a, another group and as as a writer of pastiche. Uh, so writer he, you know, he, of he, pastiche. Yeah. So he copies. He, yeah, yeah. So he, he wanted me to to um, essentially declare defeat and yeah. say, well, I'm not a composer and yeah, and, yeah. and I'm 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 a I'm I'm a I'm a copyist. I'm, I'm, he was basically trying to take away your, your livelihood. Absolutely, but he, and and. and uh, and you don't do that without feeling quite assured that you can. Yeah. Um, but that didn't go through. Not at all. And and what was really interesting about it was, I mean, I've I've joked about this before, but I mean, I, I, no agent could have done me a, a, you know, <laughs> a, a better service than that. I mean, what, what he's what, what he's done for me is is. You know, he's 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 put a spotlight to the Timpani Concerto. I mean, which has been played elsewhere. Since since become oh fairly well known within its genre, and, and so I mean he's he's really he's he's done me a, an incredible favor, but I don't think he meant to. But I it's it's yeah. yeah um, I mean, it's sort of appointed himself as your personal nemesis. Yes. And <laughs> slash and he, PR agent. Yeah, yeah. he comes yeah. in and just trips and falls flat on his face. Well, absolutely, but but I, but I think it it also shows that times have changed, yeah. and uh, you know and I've. I was just recently. I, I was at a seminar with some of my colleagues of the Norwegian Society of Composers, and you know, it, it, it's now a very polystylistic group of people. It's very eclectic. You have all yeah. kinds of different composers, and and it, you know, what what what's clear to me is that for generation, the generations growing up now, in mean, composers now in their twenties, teens, whatever, this environment, this this way of thinking. This sort of absolute rejection of anything that isn't within a certain hmm. tradition, you know, it's unthinkable because we don't think like that anymore. That's it's hmm. not who we are. It's not how and it's not how it works. I mean, it doesn't mean that that you I mean, you will still find that that critique, um, but I think possibly less and less so. Uh -huh. At least okay. that's my experience. So, <clears throat> just to sort of focus in on this thing of of uh, resistance. Uh, and that, because I think it's important for our viewers, our listeners, uh, to to understand that you know, I said well, almost the, the archetypical necessity of resistance. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you're really an example of someone who can go through not just the criticism for the concerto, but through the years at the, at the music academy, and you can come out on the other side. So it, to, it just struck me thinking about your development that that these people, like for example this professor and that, that criticism of your mm -hmm. concerto, is just somehow a scene from Lord of the Rings or something <laughs> like that. So you have to pass these things and then you get into you know, on the other side. Uh, and it's like from a bird's eye perspective, 
I, I think that could be a good way of thinking about it, that this is what you have to go through to grow. Well, I, I think, well, I... I'm not I, romanticizing it, but... No, but, no, but, but, I, mean, I, mean, no, but I, I, I would agree. I mean, we don't all need a Balrog to, 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 <laughs> to you know, to, to, to fight, but, but I, think, I think that there, there is a, there's an element of that, and I think in, in, in all lives, I mean, we, yeah. we... It's also a matter of, of having something to defend, you know, yeah, having yeah. something to fight for. I was going to uh, interject that, uh, something to that effect, words to that effect. Uh, when we were talking about this uh, earlier, you said that uh, you were glad for having met this resistance, but you were also very happy to have a teacher like Trygve Matsen, your, your first true teacher, uh, in the back. And that really, really struck me at the importance of I mean, this has been a red thread through the whole uh, conversation uh, so far. How, uh, you know, when you don't think about Bach or whomever or Rembrandt or whomever as someone from that century, but as your contemporary who masters these tools yes. and from whom you can learn. Exactly, yes. Then you have the knowledge integrated and you are much more fit to meet resistance because you have an integrity you, you know what you stand for or what, what the discipline might, might where this discipline might lead you well I, I i think that's that's really i mean there you you, you couldn't ask for better weaponry or shields i mean it's right. it's, it's really yeah. it's it is something that that i mean it, it is a charm of sorts i mean it, it, it there there it is, is a what a charm it, it, it yeah. is a, it, there is protection within that there is right. there is also i think um, and of course, certainly, there's there's inspiration in that. I mean, most yeah. importantly, it's something you know, it, it, it's something that's there for you to respond to and and feel excited about. Yeah, because it's, know, it, it takes you to a bird's eye perspective in the midst of criticism, for example. Yes, exactly. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's the negative criticism. No, but it, and it's, it it gives you an impetus to strive and and, and, yeah. and keep going. And I yeah. think that's really what it's about. Yeah. And and. Um, now, uh, I have been very fortunate. I mean, I, like yeah. you said, I, I, I've, I've had mentors as well as, as tormentors. <laughs> and and, 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 and it's, it's, I'm, 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 you know, it's, it's been enriching in that yeah, sense. Right. And, and, um, yeah. But when you're, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to, to, to be happy about it now and, and, and to find, you know, at this point it's, it's just kind of a, it's, it's, it was part of the journey, and it, it yeah. certainly made me who I am. But at the time, you know, and when I was younger, um, it was much more daunting, and 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 of so course. there were, of course, moments where 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 it was a little bit scary, um, and you know, I've I, okay. So so uh, personal question: Did you ever doubt them? Well, I mean, not in that sense. I mean, I've, I think I think every every. Writer of music, any artist. I mean, there, you, you know, you, you you constantly evaluate yourself, and you you and you you know you, you think, well, is what I do any good? And you and mm -hmm. of course, you, you, there's always that's that's always going to be there. I think every everyone has moments where they they will think that you know one day I'm going to be found out. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're going to realize that 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 I'm that I'm, that I'm no good. Go um, the front, yeah. yeah, exactly. I think everyone has that. Yeah. Um, but you know, as you go along, hopefully you'll be too busy to even worry about it. I mean, right. you know, it, it, it's just about just the work itself. You know, every and, and that's really that's. But that's, did you? I mean, was it sort of? Uh, I don't know, too strong a word, perhaps. But was it overwhelming at the time, or did you sort of try to to intellectualize it and understand what the, what is going on here? Well, I, 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 or is that, I does that come later? No, well, I, I think no, I think I, I think I tried to intellectualize it. While it was happening, because yeah. you know you, you you try to sort of find your footing. Um, what was overwhelming about it was you know the the thought that you know because this here was a person that that was very very much intent on precluding me from being able to have a career. And yeah. I mean, and, I mean, and, and, we, we should interject the cocktail party anecdote. Well, that's that's well, very the, shortly. It was, it, it was it was relayed to me, so I I I, yeah. I, 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 I there's no there's no way for me to, to you know validate it, but but I, I was I was told by a friend who'd been present because um, there there used to be for all the 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 doctoral students there were, there were these 
um, parties at the end of the, the semester, summer semester. And um, for, I think this is for, like, for the graduating classes, at least for the graduating conductors and, and doctoral musicians. And um, this took place at this professor's house. Yeah, this, and the same professor. Same professor. The. I, this was the professor. This is while I was studying in New York, I think. Um, so it, it was relayed to me after the fact. Um, but, but he had then, someone had brought up my name. Um, I don't know why and I don't know in what context. Um, but it had uh, it certainly um, gotten a re got a reaction from him, and his reaction was to make a toast, um, stating that he would spend whatever time he had left doing whatever he could to prevent me from having a career in Norway. And um, again, it's very much kind of in line with with what I've what I received later of of, of Miss Ives. Um, and I think, um, you know, when you're, when you're in your early twenties mm. and someone who's been a very, um, important figure in, in your field, you know, someone who's, who's, who's been, um, not only as, as a composer and a teacher, but also as a public figure. I mean, cause he used to be a very public figure back when we had, that kind of, of, of media, you know, um, and, and, and what's, what's, what was daunting or, 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 or overwhelming about it was the fear that, well, what if this poisons everything? You know, yeah. what, what, if, what, if, what if this actually does? That's, that's a real problem. Well, or, and, or and, and, a it, possibility. It, it, it could be, but then again, people are people, and, and you know, most people, well, I mean, if, if a professor does that, you know, that, that, that sort of... Yeah, there, there is something about it that I, th I, th I, th you, you don't need a lot of human experience to to see through it and 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 to see it as like uh, it was too eager or too. Uh, there, exactly, there, there's just something a mm. bit too antagonistic about about it. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's 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 casting yourself you, in a role of of of, of well, like it, well, like you said, a, 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 a Balrog or or, or, <laughs> or some sort of mythical creature. Yeah. Um, it's it's a bit too sinister. Right, right. Okay, so <clears throat> happy story. Then at some point uh, you get to know Christopher Rodlin. Around the same time, actually, this yeah. is, I met Christopher. Uh, I think right as I, I was about to graduate from the academy. Right, uh, and right. um, and that, so, that, so just to shortly describe, painter. This is a lithograph. He makes beautiful. A lot of landscapes, very, some very mon monumental, very sort of centered and very calm, but still, still very, very austere. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, how does that help a composer? Well, I mean, first of all, that overlapped with the very end of my my stint at the Norwegian Academy of Music. Um, so, the immediate help, if you will, was was having colleagues at last you know someone to talk to someone who had been through some of the same situations i'd been through and someone who'd dealt with some of the same issues that i was dealing with and had most importantly a lot of the same interests that i had and still have and so it, it was um it was a very vibrant milieu it's it, it was a group of well it was it was a non-dogmatic um, very inclusive, very embracing, very friendly uh, assemblage of, of personalities. And, and what was interesting was I was the only musician, I was the only composer in that group. And um, it seemed there was a lot for me to do there. Um, you know, they, I, I could be of use. I mean, what, what they, they had um, something they called um, Center for the Liberal Arts, which was a lot more liberal than that sounds. It was it was it was kind of a bohemian um, hive, if you will, uh -huh. um, and uh, it was very much centered around Christopher Rodlin uh, and also the Swedish poet Håkan Sandell. And through both of them, um, or, uh, there were a lot, I mean, just a lot, a very interesting group of painters, poets, writers. Um, and uh, also, which is my way into it, uh, uh, there was a folk fiddler, uh, Andreas Yulnes, uh, who, who I think played um, 
for some event or other, um, and who I knew and who knew Christopher, and that was that was that was my way into it. And and then, but he hadn't really been part of that scene. And but th so through me, he became part of it, and a lot of folk musicians and classical musicians got, became part of it. And so it, 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 we grew to be kind of a large collective of people and and yeah. with very i mean similar interests but also very different pursuits yeah but like, like i mean could you could you discuss your work like absolutely feedback i mean in that it, sense or? yes i mean not not always in a very technical sense because i mean i yeah. i'm i'm a composer and 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 you know you, you know you're sitting there talking to a painter or a poet um but we would very quickly realize that so many of our ideals and ideas and concepts were similar. I mean, you can you can discuss composition with a painter or with a poet. Right. You know, form is something that that's always you know it, it's it's the same um, subject matter, even if if the specifics or the the particulars are different. I mean, you know, the, you know the, we, different media, but 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 same same ideas, and and so. I, I think I learned a lot, and I think you know. Sometimes for me, it's this is something I've done quite a bit. I've 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 often found myself learning more or learning better lessons through the prism of another art form. So, for instance, I mean, for me as a melodic writer, I think my my sense of melody was sharpened quite a bit from setting poetry to music. You know that that helped me right. sort of. Curtail some of my tendencies. I mean, I'm, my you I, would uh, use poem as your vantage point uh, and it, what, what, build absolutely. up under that. And, and what what happened was, I mean, very specifically, I mean, my I I would, I'd had a tendency to write uh, good beginnings of themes, but I I you know I, they would go on and on, and I I wouldn't really know where to stop them. Um, so I'd, I you know I'd, I'd I'd start something and you know and, and it would take flight so to speak, but right. it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't really settle into something that I mean I, I I kind of got in the way of it and what 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 I learned you know setting a lot of poetry was I would cadence myself a little bit differently I, w I would know mm -hmm. where to again it's a it's a matter of of kind of looking at a material and 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 seeing okay what's the core element here what's what's important what's not so important what's good what's not so good you know and and, and you, you you get to kind of sculpt things at so, least i felt that way so doing that you you got the chance to sort of delimit uh, your range or, or well in a sense it's a de delineation of, of of the process i mean it, 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 so you, you you get you get to kind of um uh at least for me i i got to keep some of my tendencies in check i, I, I got i got to check myself and um i think i was able to become more um Articulate melodically, yeah, uh, and so that's something that happened. I think through poetry, um, and I think through painting, I, I some of the same things. I mean, you, you you look at a motif, and you look at you know a composition, and you look at okay, so what are all the different elements of this composition composition that that helps shape that one overall composition? I mean, how, right. how do the different elements sort of strengthen each other? And 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 that's something I think you can you can do in music as well, and I think that's. So well, I, I guess you know, in a purely uh, concrete manner, it wouldn't have the same effect if you had you know five equally big mountains on either side. Exactly. So then yeah. you take away the the whole the monumentality of it. So. Exactly, and then, and then you know the entire shape of the the picture, yeah. everything yeah. sort of strives for that yeah. centered. Um, gestalt, yeah. and I think that's the, you know so it's it's the same thing. I mean you you. Because it's a different art form, uh, you can see sort of the, the the abstract ideas and the comp you can see sort of the pure composition of it. Um, at least for me, it was it was um, it made certain things more clear. Like I mm. mean, I, I not that I didn't think about form, uh, but I guess when I was starting out writing, even though I I knew there was such a thing as form. I mean, I could look at pieces and say, well, it's an A B A or something like that. But it, you know, there still. Um, I think my my grasp was very rudimentary, and I I because I, I I I was I was too engaged in the actual writing, I, you know, and, and and seeing it through the prism of another or the lens of another art form helps you perhaps take more of a bird's eye perspective. Mm. Um, at least that's the way I've felt, and that, that's certainly one of the aspects of of, of the whole that whole scene of, of, of Christopher and, and Hocan Sandel and, and, and all of the painters and 
all the different artists that I met through that. I think my, my own understanding of, of certain concepts um, become, became clearer to me, became right. more tangible. And, and so even though I'd, I'd talked about form up until that point, or I, I, I'd talked about the architecture of a piece, <laughs> I finally sort of realized what, I was, what I'd been talking about <laughs> without really knowing what I, what I was talking about. So it was that, that kind of strange feeling of, uh, you know, finally my mind or my spirit has caught up with, with my ideas. Yeah, you know, right. it, it's it, like, yeah. ah, I finally actually get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's funny. I, I won't tell the whole story, but, but uh, I remember understanding a, a, a fundamental thing about uh, late Titian's technique through listening to a recording of uh, uh, The Doll's House. No, no, um, The Wild Duck by ah. Ibsen. Yes. Where Ibsen you know, has these sentences in the play, and then suddenly I realized there's this underground tunnels that connect them, you know, yes. in, different, yeah. in different parts. So that the, the sentence is seemingly very mundane, yeah. but then it relates to that other sentence, and you, you get that you know, real grand uh, perspective of it um, but, but the, the main point was that I understood something in painting through uh, a play but I, yeah. I think I think it works like that I think it's, it's yeah. exactly that mm. you know it, it's mm. like those eureka moments yeah. sometimes you have to kind of distance yourself from the craft that, that you always practice I mean like, yeah. and for me I mean writing music it's an everyday thing it's you know it's it's what you yeah, it's that's it everyday thing yes that's a perfect thing because it's not, this is go, goes back to what, what you said about uh, Toby Matson and Daniel Poor, to be you know, self, the tradition or no, old knowledge, so-called, is just something self-evident. Yes. It's not something you went for inspiration, but you just do the craft because you know it. Well, exactly, uh, and, and it's, it's, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes, yeah. it becomes a, you know, more than that, it just, it becomes... It becomes you. It, it's 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 what you do. It's it's who you are, and it's it's just how you live in a sense. And I, but it's it can be difficult to really have those great moments of, of recognition when it's your everyday life. It becomes almost mundane, mm -hmm. you know. And well, some of it is very mundane. Right. So uh, so some of that is then you so yeah you come into an environment of uh, figurative painter like Rodin, Rodin or poets. Yes. And then. You suddenly see it from a di different perspective than your your own work. Exactly. Yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. Right. So speaking of your own work, then, uh, uh, and the situation for that type of you know tonal music, uh, I don't know if it's a good ending to hear your thoughts on the future for tonal music. What do you th What do you envision? Well, I, th I mean, I. Th I th think, you know, these are good times for, for tonal composers. There's been a, a tremendous renaissance. I mean, there are a lot of tonal composers now. You know, some are, some are great, some are not great, but, 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 but there's, a, there's a lot of them. There's, there's a plethora of, of different yeah. types of, of, of tonal projects, if you will. I mean, yeah. the, the, you've had Martin Romberg as a guest here, and, and, and he has his very sort of unique, I'd say kind of a, like a, a romantic fantasy um, way of approaching that tradition and it, and it and he does it beautifully and you have other composers who who are equally successful doing other i mean pursuing different interests but it's i think crucially it didn't die you know it it's yeah. it survived and it's perhaps stronger than it ever was and, and, and more v vibrant and vital than it's been for a very long time and i think you know my, I, I, I do think that my generation, our generation, uh, probably people a little older than us and certainly people younger than us, a lot of them also probably um, were influenced by film music where, where, where that tradition survived and were able to kind of take it in and, and not as something to study, but something that became kind of a natural language. It's, 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 and and I, think, I think what's interesting now is you, you can actually talk about what we, we often refer to as neo tonal music, um, as you know, as our first real common practice period since probably the beginnings of the of, of the nineteenth century. Um, so you know, it, it's it's now it's 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 something that's maybe even 
more communal, maybe more universal or more, more um, well, how should I put it? I, th I, th I think it's, it, it has to do with technology as well. It has to do with how much music all of us are hearing. I mean, we, we, we've, mm. we've accumulated and, and assimilated so much music and so much different music that first of all, it's very, diff very, very, very different to be, I mean, now as compared to say the 1950s or whatnot, it's difficult to insist on one point of view being right. I think, I think we're naturally more pluralistic. We're naturally inclined to be interested in all kinds of different music. Part of that also means that, you know, all of, I mean, that our entire tradition or, or the entire classical romantic tradition is available to us. And, it, and not only is it available to, to us, you know, through history, but it's also, we can see how it did survive. I mean, it, it's yeah. been with us all along. And I think that's something that, that is possibly unique for our time, you know, that we can, we can, we can see it as, if we want to, we, it's, it's easy now to, to perceive it as something that's, that's ours to share. Yeah, and I think um, a lot of this has to do with what the official story, what is supposed to be mainstream, and then there's the situation you're describing. And that has gotten an opportunity now. Well, I think so. I mean, I, I, you know, if you look at so many of the most successful composers working today, I mean, there are different schools and different strands and whatnot. Um, but certainly there, you know, some of this, like if you look at, at choral music, just to take one, one field, and it's, it's a field that I've dabbled in. I, don't, I haven't written a lot of it, but, but I've written some of it. But, I, but, but it's a huge field. I mean, and there are literally hundreds of composers now. And, and of course, there, there's, there's a danger to that because there can, I mean, things can start to sound a little bit samey. But, but still, I mean, to think that the market is huge, and within that kind of market, you'll have people who will actually do very interesting, very unique things. And, and then you'll have people who will cater to the market, but at, at least the craft survives or is, is, right. is, is, is revivified. And I think that too, I mean, just the, the fact that, because I mean, obviously the goal is to, to, to create something that's beautiful and, and, and that can sort of stand the test of time. But in order to have those kinds of artists, you need to have a huge field of, of, of at least practitioners who will make sure that the craft will always be there. I mean, that, that there is some, that there is a place you can actually learn it. Or you'll have colleagues, and I think the, you know, it, it's 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 vital now. It's 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 thriving, um, and it's not to say that it's all interesting. It's like every, I mean, everything. There's always been good, mediocre, and bad, um, and but the fact that it's present, and it's actually a vibrant, living thing. That's that's not new. It's it's at least it's a, probably the healthiest it's been in a good long while. Well, Marcus Paus, thank you for coming to the Cave of Pillars. It's my pleasure, and thank you for watching. Remember, you can support our channel at caveofpillars.com. I'll see you next month.